The underdog tale continues. We have made it to the conference championship. Big come from behind victory over the Cowboys in the divisional. And now we face the eight and nine, but not to be slept on, San Francisco 49ers here in the conference championship. They are very good, led by Christian McCaffrey, of course. Brock Purdy at quarterback. Kyle Juszczyk, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk. And rookie receiver out of Colorado, who we considered in the draft, only normal dev turns out, Evan White. I believe he was the best looking receiver in the class in terms of just like overall makeup. I know some like within our own division, Brian Briscoe has a higher development trait and now is the same overall or even one point higher, but still doesn't quite look as good as Evan White does. On the defensive side of the ball, Fred Warner, Nick Bosa, obviously guys you have to worry about. Charvarius Ward is a stud, playing really well. Dre Greenlaw, Talano Hufunga. They've got a number of very, very good players, Shavon Hargrave, that might make our life very difficult today. How close is Trey Lance to another dev, or not dev trade upgrade, but another skill point upgrade? He's gotta be pretty close. Played really well in the divisional. Uh, did get hurt for a second in that game. Desmond Ritter kind of snaked his way back onto the field as he continues to do somehow. But Trey Lance continues to play very well. And much to the disappointment, I'm sure, of a lot of viewers, I think Trey Lance just could be the guy uh, for me here in Falcons franchise. I know everyone wants to see me draft a quarterback the way we usually have. But I kind of like the underdog story of former top five pick that's fallen out of favor everyone thinks is a bust and here we go we get him in falcons franchise and he leads us to a conference championship game after being acquired at the trade deadline it's like a combination of it's like if josh dobbs was a first round pick that most people consider to be a bust at this point that's essentially what it is now i've been on record and i i've said that i don't think trey lance is a bust yet we don't know he is like 23 years old and it's just impossible to know whether he's a bust at this point. Now, he certainly could be, but it's impossible to know at this point, in my opinion. But uh, we will uh, we'll see what ends up happening. Now, I do think it's perfectly reasonable like, if you think Trey Lance is a bust. Because at this point, you know what? The, the 49ers traded up so much to get him, right? And they certainly did not get close to the value that they would have wanted, right? Uh, so I get that, like, from an organizational standpoint. But for the player, he's just too young, is essentially what it comes down to, and playing the most difficult position. It was such a weird situation with the 49ers, where Brock Purdy played so well, and Trey Lance really didn't. He was injured when he got opportunities, and every time he got a new opportunity, he got hurt. So it just seems like... It doesn't seem like you know, an A or an F in terms of a grade, to me, it seems like uh, a, a did not complete, right? I feel like it's just a really odd situation. And uh, he's just a we'll see for me. But yeah, I, I don't, if you want to think whatever you want to think, who cares, right? Do whatever you want to do. But I'm interested, uh, interested to see what happens in his career. And as for Falcons franchise, I like what I'm seeing, and I like the potential. We have upgrades here, and Tremaine Hancock is an interesting one. He doesn't really play a whole lot, but he's someone that we're developing. He's got good speed, great hit power. Block shedding could end up being very good. Coverage is quite poor, but he's got a lot of really good traits. I'm going to upgrade Run Stopper, I believe. I want Block Shed to go up into the 70s. But I think there is something there with Tremaine Hancock. Of course, we don't get it. But for an undrafted rookie free agent player... This is pretty good. Gonna upgrade speed rusher on Arnold Ebicady. We need a pass rush. And now he's up to 82 finesse moves. His block shedding, we've upgraded a ton to this point. It's a 79. I want to say he might have been a preseason training camp standout, and we took the plus five block shed, if I remember correctly, because I feel like that's extremely high for him. But I'm not mad about it. And I'm gonna upgrade... I'm gonna upgrade power rusher here. He keeps his scheme fit. 82 overall. Gets a boost to block shed even with power rusher plus to awareness and tackle and play rec. So block shedding into the 80s now. And then power moves, of course, stays the same. Yeah, he's starting to look really good. Speed's great. Acceleration's even better. And strength is even better than that. This, to me, is an absolute steal in the second round. NFC Championship. Oh, Falcons, 49ers. They've got a lot of X-Factors. Brock Purdy. 
Trey Lance. They meet again. Kind of setting the stage there with the Trey Lance buildup. But yes, Brock Purdy will take on the quarterback he essentially replaced. Kicked out the former top five pick. And now they meet for the first time as opponents here in the NFC Championship game. What a storyline. Does Lance get his revenge? Or does Brock Purdy remain the top dog? Should be fun to find out. And here we go. Young Way Koo's kick is away. And we are underway here at Levi Stadium in Santa Clara, California. For the NFC Championship game. Should be a lot of fun. Brock Purdy looking to defeat Trey Lance. Again, technically, I guess, in a way. 25 touchdowns to just four interceptions for Brock Purdy. Maybe he is becoming the franchise quarterback for the 49ers. And this could be rough. I mean, they have so many playmakers in the past game, like Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle. But those guys are also so impactful in the run game, which is already elite, with Kyle Juszczyk as a blocker, but also a great receiver. Christian McCaffrey as a great runner and receiver. George Kittle as a great receiver and blocker, especially. This is just a really, really good team. And then Debo Samuel as a runner and a receiver. Everybody on this entire 49ers offense can do everything. It's pretty insane. And we're going to have our hands full today. It's going to be a challenge. Debo Samuel into the backfield again. Christian McCaffrey into the slot. It's going to be a handoff. And I feel like we've played that very, very well. Third down and seven. Tell me that's a false start. Tell me the right tackle jumped. He looks sad. That is a false start. It's going to be third and long as Murray jumped for the Niners. Do we blitz? I like the idea of it. We'll see if we can actually get pressure. We got to cover George Kittle going towards the sideline. And that is incomplete. Really just a throw away from Purdy. Great coverage down the field. Pressure got in there quickly enough to force that throw away. And we'll get the football after a great, great first drive for our defense. As Presley Harvin has made his way to the Bay Area, we'll kick it deep to Cordero Patterson, who is re-earning some responsibilities after a nice game uh, in the divisional. And now Trey Lance will take the field, looking to get the first points up on the scoreboard in this game. And I'm excited about it. Those were his season stats. Continues to get better and better and better. Over 2,000 passing yards, 19 touchdowns to 11 interceptions. And you do have to remember that a few of those interceptions came in the final game of the year where he got hurt. And I think he had zero touchdowns to three picks or something insanely terrible. But there's a ton of space for Bijan Robinson. He makes one man miss, maybe even another, and gets 15 yards on the first play from scrimmage here as our offense takes it to midfield. Getting Bijan open into the open field is going to be the biggest thing that wins us this game. Open as a receiver. I believe he had eight catches last week. And into the open field as a runner where he's able to make so many different players miss. And Kyle Pitts is wide open underneath. Just got to beat Fred Warner here. He is able to wrap up, but it's a nice gain for our offense again as we are rolling. Looking like the better team. It's just been a couple of plays on both sides of the ball. I totally get that. But it is true. We have looked better up to this point. And we're going to go back to Kyle Pitts, who makes the catch on the best coverage linebacker in football. Fred Warner, no match for the versatile Kyle Pitts. Let's go back to Bijan here on second and three. Yeah, we, we needed more from the left guard, to be honest. I think there was ample opportunity for a big play there. And a big play being like at least like seven or eight yards. I know that's not huge, but it's better than, we get, well, than what we got. We're going to try to run the ball here. Got to run right at Hargrave, away from Nick Bosa. But there is enough space, and there goes Bijan. Easy first down, and we're into the red zone. And work off play action. Kyle Pitts could have a touchdown here. I don't see him, though. We're going to go over the middle, and there is Drake London on the crosser. And in for the score. We take the lead on the road after playing great defense here in our first big-time matchup in the playoffs. Got eliminated in the divisional last year. This time we're able to win and advance. And here we are in the conference championship making big time plays. Drake London making up for all his early season drops. Oh, that's not going to be good. Jesse Bates actually saves a touchdown. That was not great, but saved. 
That's no good. That's no good. We were not in man coverage against George Kittle. Well, maybe Richie Grant was. But Kittle just kind of got vertical really quickly. Purdy was able to hit him really quickly. And I don't know what the strategy should be against Brock Purdy. It worked, obviously, really well on uh, the first possession of the game. But if, if they run the ball and block well down the field, I don't know what we're supposed to do. It's going to be a touchdown. Christian McCaffrey finds the end zone. There's nothing we can do there. Their blocks were just too good down the field. We don't have the speed to get over there and make a play. And the, the speed really wasn't even the issue. It was the fact that we couldn't shed a block. Just made it way too easy for McCaffrey to get uh, wide open into the end zone. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. Just we got to be able to shed a block, and we couldn't. Great return from Cordero Patterson. Gives us great field position. And there goes B. John Robinson making the most of it. And we are on one play after the return to the 20-yard line. It looks like we're going to be able to run the ball really well today. I didn't think so with Nick Bosa and Javon Hargrave, Eric Armstead on the defensive line, right? And then the second level, Dre Greenlaw, who's not on the field right now, Fred Warner, and we're able to run the ball extremely well to this point as we're going to check down to Madsen, who's able to make that catch. Not really a ton open down the field as far as I could tell, so we just hit the check down and uh, live to see second down, essentially. Don't want to force the ball into traffic. We're playing in a really good spot. We don't have the lead, but we have the momentum. I would say clearly right now. Need to not give it away. And we're going to take a shot. Pitts! I don't know how we couldn't get in position to go up for that. Need to not turn over the football. Third and seven. Need some type of points here. Slant, open, Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts with speed, and he's down to the one-yard line. You know, I did, when we threw that, okay, I thought we'd get tackled right away. We'd get a nice a conversion on third down there, obviously. But Kyle Pitts was this close to making that a touchdown, and it's first and goal on the one. I don't like these play calls at all. QB draw, stick, and read option. Let's think about who we have. Let's go inside zone. Let's give the ball to Bijan Robinson and not get too cute. It's my favorite play because it works so well. Touchdown, Robinson. Seven gets a seven pending the point after. And we're really dominating at this point on offense. Defensively, great first series for us. Not so great the second time around. I'm worried that we're going to get worn down as this game goes on and they're just going to be able to run the ball at will. Now... I will say, historically, when we've played teams that have been able to run the ball really well, they just choose not to. So hopefully that's the case today. I guess if we can force Brock Purdy to throw, I think we're going to have good results. And we are able to stop the run, like, consistently. But we are a team that also allows the big play off the run sometimes. So if Christian McCaffrey has four rushes for, say, 70 yards, it's very close to that. It might be three carries for a total of three or four yards. As Jeff Okuda has good coverage, but it can't end up wrapping up. And Debo Samuel has speed to get past Mike Hughes. Mike Hughes, chase him down. Diving, can't get him. Touchdown. As I said, we are susceptible to allowing the big play. I thought it would be via the run. And this comes with a lot of running, mostly after the catch and after a Jeff Okuda broken tackle. I was going to say about Christian McCaffrey, three rushes for three or four yards, and then the one rush for 65, but... I think we allow something even more than that with Debo Samuel getting all the way down the field after a broken tackle. And they've tied it up to end the first quarter. It's been an exciting first quarter. I don't know that our defense is really going to be able to keep up with these Niners. What I will say, though, is that we are going to have to play perfectly on offense. Otherwise, I don't love our chances of winning this game. I, I know I felt really good. We still have a bit of momentum. I love what the offense is doing. But we are going to have to play perfectly. Otherwise, can we stop the Niners consistently? I'm not sure. And there's another big injury to our linebacking core. Had one with Caden Ellis last game. I think he was able to come back. But George Elliott, the UDFA from Boise State, seems to be hurt. Just a peck stream, but we're going to go to who we talked about earlier. Tremaine Hancock and to get more special teams opportunities. Elliott does work into some goal line packages. So we might see Hancock take his place if the 49ers get back near the goal line. But until then, it's probably just going to be the guys you're used to, which is 
a little bit of Caden Ellis, D. Hump, the rookie Deshaun Humphreys, and of course, Troy Anderson. It's third and five. The screen is not diagnosed by Warner, but oh my goodness, Dre Greenlaw makes up the ground. Wow, I mean, that's just a great play. I thought we had numbers. I thought that was going to be an absolutely easy first down as soon as, as Fred Warner just didn't play the screen. But as you can see, we get no block from Drew Dahlman. And I mean, even Chris Lindstrom, like he got a block off, but it didn't really do much because the sideline's already there, right? I guess you're blocking someone away. It was really Drew Dahlman who just could not keep pace to get to Dre Greenlaw. We needed to try to juke back at some point. I just thought we could win the foot race or Drew Dahlman would connect with him at some point. Uh, that's a mistake in the open field for sure. And it'll be fourth and two and a missed opportunity. When I talked about playing perfect, you know, you can't have those opportunities, which is surely what that was, and then let them go to waste, which is what we did. There's Hancock making a tackle instantly though. Brock Purdy, after a completion of one yard there, <laughs> has three total completions for close to 100 yards. McCaffrey has about three or four attempts for 70 yards. We have to be better at not allowing the huge play. And they're going down the field, and that could be intercepted. It's off the hands of A.J. Terrell. Good defense on the back end to force another uh, incompletion. Turnover there would have been big. Instead, now the 49ers will get another crack at it. Third and nine. We've got to watch out for McCaffrey. And that's going to be just a perfect play call, but better defense. A.J. Terrell knocks the ball out of the hands of the rookie, Evan White. And we will force a punt. We needed that. No mistakes. There's Bijan. Up the middle. Into the open field. No. Shut down. And there's another injury. This is the second of the game now. This time on offense. It's Drake London. Has a touchdown. Clearly frustrated. Hopefully it's not too serious. But Bijan is in the zone. We need to get him the football. I'm thinking as a receiver instantly. Although Madsen is open. And Lance cannot hit him. That's a really, really, really big miss. I think Madsen was bumped a little bit over the middle there. Wasn't able to be on time with Trey Lance. And we missed an opportunity at a big play. Maybe should have run the ball on first down. But I was thinking we could just throw it to Bijan. As he throws a big stiff arm to Warner. Look at Robinson. He's still on his feet. What a run by Bijan Robinson. It's bruised ribs for London. We're going to go to Rashid Shahid for now. That'll probably force Donovan Peoples-Jones onto the field, and it does, which I don't love. First and 10, let's run the ball. Fred Warner wants to make a play. You're going to meet Bijan again. Why do I feel like Rashid Shahid can just win down the field in this spot? We might give it a chance. Hufunga's not especially fast. Oh, the dig is going to be wide open, and it for sure was. As soon as I saw that safety drifting over to cover the streak from Shahid, I knew we had it. And you can see Drake London back on the field getting wide open. I thought I told him to not play, but uh, it would have been an awesome play. It's just when you, you leave one-on-ones against really good pass rushers, you're not going to have time. Third and seven, London wins instantly. Get it out in front. Get it to him. And it's Drake London's second touchdown of the game. Playing through injury does not matter. Drake London. Have a day. Two catches, two touchdowns. And it's a lead again over the Niners. Good recovery from Lance and a perfect pass. It's going to be a run left. Can we get over there? Oh, no, we can't. AJ Terrell. Big time tackle. I don't know. They're just winning on the inside occasionally. This could be the final snap before the two-minute warning. And it is. It's a run. And it, they just, again, locked it too well. First play out of the two-minute warning. It looked like everybody was open on that play. Pretty impressive. A minute and a half in the first half. And everything was open again. Mike Hughes just beat by IU. Switched on, went for the deflection, and he just waved to him like, like the Queen of England. Actually, you know what? Yeah, he did play like he was dead there because... Couldn't have been any further away if it was... If, whatever. I don't want to be too disrespectful. Um, 21-21 with 121 to play in the second quarter from the 21. No, we're on the 19. Bijan's been great today. Got to keep getting him the football. He still stays in the zone. 
So what better way to get him the football than here on a little screen? He's open. Makes a sharp cut, and there goes Robinson. He makes a bunch miss, and there goes Bijan Robinson. It's a foot race. Charverius Ward not going to win it. Bijan down the sideline. Touchdown, Robinson. He is having a playoff game to remember here in the NFC Championship. Team fired up. They got synchronized dance moves, and it's not actually that synchronized. That looked not good, but what did look great was the long touchdown. Get Bijan involved. I talked about it. Get him in the open field as a runner and as a receiver, and we're going to win the game. Big touchdown. Now, the only problem is we may have scored too quickly when you want to make that the final drive of the first half so you can go into the halftime with not only the lead but getting the football back to potentially make it a two-score ball game. Now we may have lost that opportunity because a minute and eight seconds with three timeouts may be enough time for the 49ers if they're able to move the ball the way they've shown uh, that they're able to at points in this game. Need our defense to come out and really play well. And I hope that the Niners to try to play this conservatively. That's going to give us the biggest advantage in this game. Second and two. Oh, Purdy was going right in the direction of two receivers right on top of each other and Cade Nellis separating them. It's third and two. We're going to pass commit, and we're going to hope that we play good enough defense. And AJ Terrell's right there to knock the football away, and I doubt they go for it. Like, it's not an awful time to, in my opinion, just because it's fourth and short from about midfield. But the problem is, is you pretty much guarantee we get points if you don't punt it. So I also uh, totally understand the punt decision, and I probably would do the same thing. It's just, it's, it's a bit of a close call because do you want to play conservatively in the NFC Championship game? If we win this, we're headed to our first Super Bowl, right? But, you know, we're also capable of getting a big play here quickly. We'll see if we can move the football down the field in a reasonable amount of time. It's a good start. They want us to play conservatively. I don't want to do that. Like, at all. Maybe a play-action shot could be a good idea. But I also want Bijan as a receiver. It's just not going to happen on this play. We'll see what we can do. How about Kyle Pitts? Down the field. Big catch and a big timeout. Already down to the 43. 11 seconds. It's not about scoring a touchdown here. It's about getting into field goal range. Probably a just a check down to Rashid Shahid. They covered it fairly well. We're going to go to the tight end. Madsen. Madsen gets down. And a flag. It's going to be a face mask. Plus 15 yards. Oh my goodness. Okay. Let's think about this. First and 10 from the 12. Six seconds to go. Do we have enough time to take a shot to the end zone? That's going to be the question. This might be stupid. We got to get rid of the football quickly in any case. Shot to Pitts. And Kyle Pitts is not stupid at all. He's a genius. Touchdown to end the first half. It's going to be a two possession lead. And we get the football to start the third quarter. Just give your best player a chance. And that's, I mean, it's either Bijan or Kyle Pitts. Threw the jump ball. Little boy! Get off me! Says Kyle Pitts. And it's a big time touchdown. 49ers will concede to end the second quarter, because obviously. And, I mean, they screwed up giving us that football back. It's 35 21 headed into the locker room. I mean,. What a first half. 256 passing yards, 87 rushing yards. We're being outrushed right now. Hasn't been a problem. Winner will take on the winner of Colts and Chiefs in the Super Bowl. I'll tell you what, if we end up winning this game, I'd much rather play the Colts. Might end up being famous last words, but I would much rather play the Colts than Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. And here we go. Second half officially underway. We are 18 in-game minutes away from a Super Bowl appearance. Just got to keep going. And it's another injury. Okay. Bijan staying in the zone. We fake it to him, and nobody bites. Quick check down to Madsen. A better throw probably nets us a few more yards than just five. Trey Lance, though, 13 for 16. Four touchdowns. It's the rookie out of Florida, Allen, who is hurt. He doesn't really see the field very often. But Trey Lance has been... I mean, nearly perfect in this game. I want that to stay. I, I forced it to Bijan. There was just, there was open space, but there, it was never actually open. 
Third and five. I saw Madsen, but I like Shahid better, and what a catch by Rashid Shahid. We needed that first down badly. A lot of space up the middle for Robinson. He bounces off another would-be tackler, and he is having an unbelievable game. Over 200 yards of total offense, I believe, for Bijan. If he doesn't have it, he's very close. And uh, we continue to just run the ball super effectively. Maybe less so with Algier. Second and nine, we're going to go back to the run. Looking for a space with Bijan. He just keeps bouncing off would-be tacklers and gets us at least a third and more manageable. And he's going to stay on the field here. Fred Warner is actually in the zone as well. We'll see what he ends up doing. We're going to go to Kyle Pitts. And Lance just misses him. You kind of got to convert that on third down. And we're going to try a 53-yarder. I think this is easily within Young Way Koo's range. And it certainly is. But uh, obviously, you'd love a touchdown in that spot. Instead, we'll settle for three. And that kick, no problem for Koo. Yeah, we just can't run with that, unfortunately. But Terrell can. A rare drop from Ayuk. That's just wide open. And Purdy misses. Okay. Big third and ten. Kittle was open enough. Purdy looks like he might take off. Throws a crossbody on the run. And the catch is made in traffic by Evan White. Oh, you're kidding me. A stop here would put us in great position to win this game. Exactly what we're looking to do. Oh, no. Trying to cover everybody. Purdy gets sacked. Grady Jarrett gets to him. And if you're the 49ers, they're not going to. But I think you would go for two in this spot. You know, you're close to the fourth quarter. Down by a lot at this point. 38-21. Our offense has been so good. I don't think you can really afford to punt at this spot and give us the football back unless you're really confident you can pin us inside the 10, which they're unable to do. There's Bijan. Look at the space. The blocking's been exceptional today, but man, has Bijan looked explosive, and he's running strong through contact. He's looking quick. He's looking like everything you want of taking a running back in the top 10. We're going to get him the football in space, make somebody miss, and he's not able to. What? What? Dalgier. Oh, my God. The blocking is just spectacular today. Bijan's open. We can't hit him. I think a good lead down the field, and he's open for the score, honestly. Nick Bosa gets in there quickly. Just couldn't hold the block for long enough, and we keep coming out. The, the CPU keeps calling mesh spot. I actually, I do like it, but we're going to we're gonna switch things up here on second and long. And we're going to get sacked here. Yeah, just too much watching. Not enough doing. It's third and 29. Try a screen on third and 29. It worked at points in this game extremely well and it's going to work again enough jr brown injured on the play but all we're really looking for is is punting space there now they get lucky and this is the final play of the third quarter instead of the clock just expiring and head into the fourth um but you know what i guess the punt on their side pays off but we were able to what burn four minutes of clock which at this point is super important and that is the end of the third quarter Brock Purdy going to have nine minutes to mount the comeback. Down by multiple scores. They're going to need to they're need, they need to get going in a hurry is what I'm trying to say. And Chris McCaffrey catching the ball and breaking tackles is going to be a good way to get him back in this game. But they need big plays. 20, 30, 40 yards if they can. Nine yards is not going to cut it. Even if they can do it consistently. In my opinion, they're down by enough where they need to really get going. And these quick little nice plays where you're moving the chains like cool but it's just taking time off the clock and it's really putting you behind the eight ball so to speak they need to go 70 yards in eight minutes a couple of times essentially so it's, uh, it's going to be a tough win for them they're getting you know big plays back to back you know like nine ten yards which said it would not be good enough i still stand by that i don't think there's enough time unless they get you know a big player two at some point Third and inches, six and a half minutes to play. It's a screen, and we are all over it, and it falls incomplete. Fourth and inches. Game effectively on the line at this point, and they are showing run. Do we run commit? Let's stack the box here. I mean, they've got to, right? Fullback dive, use check, breaking tackles, and he is short. They brought Fred Warner into the backfield on offense. 
It's maybe why that play didn't work. Can't bring a middle linebacker onto the field. We took the number two ranked defense and we've made it look like one of the worst in the league. Bijan seemingly unstoppable. Is that going to knock him out of the zone because we got tackled for word? no gain? Does not. It's got to be for a loss, and that just simply wasn't close enough, I guess. Second and ten might force us into a pass. London wide open over the middle. Only his third catch today, I believe, but they've all been big, meaningful plays. Second and two, easy run spot. Or is it? Linebackers don't really bite. We're just going to check down to Robinson, and he is just on another level today. Read option, Trey Lance trying to get into the end zone, and he forces his way in. Five total touchdowns for Trey Lance in his return to Levi Stadium. What a game for Trey Lance, and the 49ers might be getting second thoughts. Three minutes for the Niners to do the impossible, or else their season is over, and I am inclined to think that it's over. Under pressure's Purdy, and down he goes. Frankie Louvu got to him first. Epic Katie finished the job. And Brock Purdy's having a heck of a time here. That's the two-minute warning. And time is probably up for these Niners fans. Now, it would be cool if you could see them mass leaving the stadium at this point. But it doesn't happen in Madden, as the crowds are lifeless, devoid of personality. Here's third and 23. Purdy looking to get sacked. He's going to throw basically right to Richie Grant, and that should do it. Intercepted by Grant. Purdy throwing up a prayer, and his prayers were not answered. More space for Robinson. I mean, he's not going to end up with 200 yards rushing in this game, but he's going to be real close to 300 total yards. Probably a bit shy. Certainly would go over 250. 49ers are not bothering uh, to use her final timeouts. And I don't blame them. They just want to get out of here, have this game be done with. Play action, trying to run up the score on Trey Lance's old team. There's Kyle Pitts, and it's touchdown number six for Trey Lance. Kyle Pitts, man. I mean, what a fun weapon to throw to. We end the first half with a big Pitts touchdown, and we're going to end the second half with another. At this point, game's already over. That's just rubbing a little salt in the wound as Trey Lance shows the 49ers what they're missing. Niners so great at playing with a lead. When they don't have one, it tends to go a little bit like this. 51-21 as the defense has completely left. 52-21 uh, if I said 51. 52-21 as the defense has completely collapsed. And we are headed to the Super Bowl. That is awesome. And the Niners on fourth and inches here in the fourth quarter are going to punt the football away. They have completely given up, officially waving the white flag. And at this point, it's impossible to blame them. There is literally 0% chance they come back in this game. Nine seconds to go. Final snap of the game will be a run to B. John Robinson. Could be a kneel down, but B. John wants extra yardage. And there he goes. He's going to end with 188 yards rushing in a monster victory over the 49ers where it was close. And that final drive of the first half, I really think cemented us uh, as the victors in this game. Niners just did not look the same after. Trey Lance and Brock Purdy shake hands at midfield. And yeah, that's a fun image. Trey Lance with nearly a perfect game. Goes 19 for 25, 338 yards passing and five touchdowns. Rushing, Bijan averaging 8.9 yards per carry. Was actually outdone by Christian McCaffrey, who of course had a super long run, 39 yards. And I uh, thought maybe even had maybe a pass caught for more. Debo Samuel had the big one, but I thought he had a bigger play than just 39 yards rushing. Interesting. Bijan with only 28 he, of course, had his long gain as a receiver as well. Ten broken tackles. Freight train got activated early. They really had no answer for it. And we didn't really have much of an answer for Ayuk. But Samuel had one catch that was really impactful. 74 yards. The rest of the game did nothing. Our receivers were amazing. Pitts, six for 105 and two touchdowns. Robinson, five for 104 and a touchdown. Madsen caught the ball when he needed to. And then two touchdowns for Drake London. This is a perfect game. Defensively, didn't really do a whole lot. Just 
Our offense took over. Defense got stops when they needed to. And then we got garbage time uh, kind of stats. But what an awesome game. And we are headed to the championship, the Super Bowl. Deshaun Humphreys, do we go pass coverage here? What's his block shedding? Let's try to get that into the 80s. He goes up to an 80 overall, which should, as a superstar, unlock him a superstar ability slot. And it does. Persistent doesn't do anything. I don't even know why that would be an option for non X-Factor players. We will give him... Let's do Crusher, Heavy Fatigue Penalty. Kind of knock somebody out of a game. That could be good. Kyle Pitts with an upgrade. We'll get blocking up to 75. I'm going to make him a little bit more well-rounded. Lead block by two. Caption Traffic actually goes up by one as well. And then Bijan, we don't even need to upgrade him. He's maxed out for an elusive back. But getting Trucking into the 90s will be really nice. I'd love to get the Juke and Spin move up a bit higher. But at this point, it doesn't particularly matter. Actually gets a plus two to strength rating, which is pretty awesome. Up to an 83 now. Trucking still not affected, but I mean, he couldn't have been any better last game. Let's be honest about that. Could not have been any better. And oh my goodness, the Colts have beat the Chiefs 28-21. And it's going to be a Falcons-Colts Super Bowl. The Matt Ryan Bowl. Very fun. Of course, as a Super Bowl team, we're going to have no players playing in the Pro Bowl, but these are the rosters. A couple of interesting surprises. I like seeing Justin Matabike here, who has played extremely well in real life, probably do a massive payday. And, uh, yep, no Pro Bowlers, unfortunately. We guys voted in, of course, but, of course, we would prefer to play in the Super Bowl, and that's exactly what's happening. So... I can't believe we've made it all the way here. The off-season episode will be the next one following this as the Colts have gone 11-6, and six, only an 83 overall team. But we can't sleep on them. Should still be a fun matchup, I hope. More upgrades, I think we'll take care of those in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.